I made a bot to scrape every single tweet about COD Zombies over the past year. We're talking every single one. If you said that you like Die Rise in a tweet, or you said you hate Die Rise in a tweet, it's in my database. Now why did I build this bot? It's simple. To take over the world. No, it's because we are going to use an army of Twitter bots and machine learning to create the definitive and ultimate ranking of every single COD Zombies map. What we're going to be doing is using a bi-directional encoder representations from Transformer Models, or BERT for short, trained using machine learning and thousands of Zombies fans tweets to get the actual data to determine which maps are the best maps and which maps are the worst maps. We're not cavemen! We have technology! Not only that, but this model is continuing to improve every day in an effort to better understand the community and better rank our Zombies maps from best to worst. This is a living, breathing list of the greatest Zombies maps of all time that will continue to evolve over time. That's what I call data. The data! Look at this data! The final result is the top 30 greatest Zombies maps of all time, ranked from best to worst. Now before we get into our list of the best and worst Zombies maps of all time, Time, I think what we should do is actually look under the hood to see what's going on so you guys can better understand how this ranking was compiled. I don't want to leave you high and dry and just tease you though, so what I'll give you is our five worst zombies maps of all time, and then we'll get into what's going on under the hood. So in order from best to worst, your five worst zombies maps of all time, according to machine learning and your tweets, are Shangri-La, Dai Rise, Zetsubo no Shima, Alpha Omega, and Firebase C. So according to AI, Firebase C is the worst Zombies map of all time. But how do we get to that conclusion? Let's look under the hood. It all starts with a single, simple, humble Twitter bot. This bot checked every day, and still is, for tweets about COD Zombies. So if you tweeted, fuck Garad Krovi, this shit's overrated, or you tweeted, I think it's been long enough, I'ma say it, Transit is one of the best COD Zombies maps of all time. I saw it, and it's in my database. The result is thousands of tweets sitting in my database, but we need to do a little bit of filtering because not all of those tweets are actually useful. The first layer of filtering is what I would call a map-specific filter. Take for example, Shangri-La. You end up getting a lot of tweets about their vacations if you just search Shangri-La on Twitter. The same goes for Ascension. You get a lot of religious tweets. Then you have maps like Shinonuma. When Vanguard announced the Shinonuma remake, a lot of people were tweeting about how much they hate Vanguard zombies. I wasn't including Vanguard zombies in this data, so I didn't want those tweets in there and I had to filter them, filter them out. I think the most bizarre filter I had to make for an individual map was actually in the case of Noctar and Toten. In April of 2021, when Prince Philip passed, there were many people on Twitter making all sorts of jokes and memes about seeing Prince Philip running around Noctar and Toten. And, well, how was I supposed to know when I made this Twitter bot that Prince Philip passing away was gonna ruin my data set? So I had to write a quick filter to take that out and yeah, now in my Twitter bot, there's a filter specifically looking out for tweets about Prince Philip and not Darren Toten. Um, thanks guys. So even after all of that filtering, I still have several thousand tweets giving opinions on different zombie maps. And I could if I want, I guess, go by hand and see which ones are positive, which ones are negative, and then I can use that to rank the zombies maps. But no, I'm lazy. I'm not going to do that. This is where machine learning comes in. This is where the fun begins. What I need is a model designed for sentiment analysis. A model that can take a bit of text and say, is this positive, negative, or just irrelevant? This is actually a pretty classic problem in the realm of machine learning and natural language processing. There are several sentiment analysis models out there, but what we want is a model that is specifically tuned to understand the way Zombies fans speak. I know that sounds really trivial, but think about it. When you're discussing a map, you might say a map is S tier or F tier. Now just a letter might be hard to denote if you're not used to understanding the context of like gamers speak. So this is something we want our model to learn. In addition to that, let's take for example the phrase the shit. If you say a map is the shit, that's good. But if you say a map is shit, 
that's bad. This is just the difference of one letter. Whether or not there is a the present before shit denotes whether something is positive or negative. This is something I want our model to be able to understand. To do this, I started with a pre-trained BERT model that I was able to get my hands on through the Scikit Learning Library. BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. I know that sounds complicated, but the key here are the encoders and the transformers. This is a transformer model, which was developed by the Google Brain team. The transformer architecture can be broken down into an encoder and a decoder. Without getting too technical, it's the encoder's job to generate context, and it's the decoder's job to use that context to find a relationship between words. This type of model actually really excels in the field of language translation. From there, people who are way smarter than me found that if you take these little encoder bits and chain them together, you can actually create what we call the BERT model. And a BERT model is actually really good for solving a number of natural language processing problems. So what we do is take this BERT model that's been trained to understand the context within a sentence and then adapt the output to solve our zombie sentiment analysis problem. From there, we just fine tune the model using a couple thousand of your tweets as well as a process known as supervised learning and bada boom bada bang, we hopefully should have a model that can understand the way zombies fans speak. Simple, right? So the pre-trained model that we started with does an okay job at zombie sentiment analysis. I ran it over a test of about a thousand tweets and I found it was able to correctly guess the sentiment about 65% of the time. But like I mentioned, it does struggle with gamer and zombie specific vocabulary. But we want to improve that. So I took our pre-trained model and then I hand labeled several thousand of your tweets and use that data set to train our model. Now at this stage, I had spent hours and hours setting up the bots, setting up the training process, and also just labeling these tweets by hands. This was the moment of truth. Can we train this model to understand zombies fans? This better work. Failure is not an option. When the training was all said and done, after 10 hours, 5,000 tweets, and four epochs of training later, our model was able to correctly guess the sentiment of Zombies fans tweets 95.6% of the time. I'll take it that's over a 30% improvement. It's not perfect, but honestly for this task, it's good enough. A great success. So now we have a model capable of analyzing and rating Zombies fans tweets. What we need to do is build a pipeline so we can take those tweets as they come in and run them through our model to figure out what their sentiment is. It works like this. Every day our Twitter bot is scraping as many caught zombie tweets as it can and then it filters them. It takes those filtered tweets and then cleans them up and preps them for our model and uploads those tweets to a data store in the cloud. Then a server is spun up once a day and it pulls those tweets from the cloud. It then runs those cleaned and prepped tweets through the model to get their sentiment. Once we have the sentiment of those tweets, we can update those tweets in our master tweet database and we can also add them to our statistics database where we're tracking the sentiment and overall opinion on every single zombies map. The results in our statistics database look like this. For each map, we take the number of positive tweets about that map and divide it by the total amount of tweets that we've collected. What this does is give us a general approval rating for the map. This would be a great way to rank the maps. The problem is, while some maps have a ton of tweets, others don't have all that many tweets. For those maps with very few tweets, it's hard to know whether or not we actually got a good statistic or if we perhaps got a little bit of skewed data. To solve this problem, we run the tweets through a function which returns a multiplier between 0 and 1. The more tweets we have for a map, the closer to 1 we are and the more likely we have a good statistic. Then we can take that multiplier and apply it to our approval rating to get our final approval score. From there, we just rank the maps from best approval score to worst approval score. I know it sounds a little complicated, but basically what this formula is doing is allowing us to rate maps based on their just overall approval rating, but then give them bumps or potentially sync them a little, depending on how much buzz they're generating online. Take for example, Noct Aaron Toten. Noct had one of the highest approval ratings in our data set. The problem was not a lot of people were talking about it. In fact, it was the least talked about map in our set. And the confidence score was so bad that it actually 
actually took it from the top of the data set towards the bottom. Now, I like that better because yes, it has a high approval rating, but how do we know we just didn't accidentally collect a random skewed bit of data? That's what the approval score does. It basically ranks maps by their approval rating, but then allows us to tweak it based on how much buzz and what kind of buzz that map is generating online. From there, we can use that number to rank our maps. I should also just mention, by the way, that running this whole system requires quite a bit of cloud infrastructure from the servers to the data stores to everything that's going on behind the scenes and just the time to put this together. If you want to support this project and also continue to support this project over time, consider checking out my Teespring. A link is in the description. There you can find merch like my Pack-A-Punch hat and my Perkaholics anonymous sweatshirt and all sorts of other zombie swag. If you like this project and you just want to support me and also support the continued running and paying for the servers that run this project, consider checking out my Teespring. A link is in the description. So now with that merch plug out of the way and the long technical explanation behind this system, let's get into what you're actually here for. The definitive ranking of greatest zombie maps of all time to the worst zombie maps of all time. Finally! Your top 10 zombies maps as follows are Kino der Toten, Der Eisendrache, Deriz, Shadows of Evil, Mob of the Dead, Shinonuma, Buried, Call of the Dead, Origins, and Nine. The final rankings look like this, but if you want, you can actually go to zombieschwitter.com and explore this data set yourself. See the full ranking as well as dig further into the statistics. Another thing you can do is actually help verify the results from our model, which will then go in turn to further train and fine tune our zombie sentiment analysis model. A couple interesting notes on this data. One, shout out to Black Ops 4 for somehow sneaking in nearly two two maps into the top 10. I didn't see that coming. Also, I was really curious where Transit would fall, and it ended up being the ninth worst zombies map of all time. Something to note though is that it actually has a pretty high approval rating. A lot of people are tweeting positive things about the map. In fact, it's actually our most tweeted map in the entire data set. The thing is, and the reason it drops all the way to ninth worse, is that while there are a lot of people tweeting about how much they like transit, there's also way more people tweeting about how much they hate transit compared to other maps. Talk about a map people love to hate. Now, are these results perfect? No, not at all. In fact, I couldn't help but notice that there in the past couple weeks have been hundreds of tweets singing the praises on high for Kino Der Toten. And in fact, they're all saying the exact same thing. I dug a little deeper and it turns out that Lex, without knowing anything about this project, has somehow managed to meme Kino Der Toten from the top 10 to now the second highest map in our data set. And probably by the time this video goes live, number one with the help of this copy pasta that everyone just keeps tweeting. Now, I could, I guess, filter it out of our data set and then re-rank the maps and Kino would probably fall into the top 10, but honestly, I kind of find this meme funny because of course, right as I'm finally wrapping up this project, after a whole year of work, hundreds of hours, people just ruin my data with a copy pasta and a meme. So, thanks guys. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I am dead inside. Anyway, if you want, you can go check out the data. A link is in the description. I think what this data actually really excels at is giving you a snapshot of what the zombies community is thinking at this time. In fact, I've actually behind the scenes started organizing the data by week so that we can see what are the most popular maps within the community or which maps are the zombies community talking about and how are they talking about them by any given time period. I think it'll be interesting to see how this data evolves. And like I said, if you want to help this project continue and also continue to see how the zombies community's feelings evolve, check out my Teespring. The link is in the description. The money is going to pay for things like the servers, the functions, the databases, all of that that keep this project running in hopefully perpetuity. That's going to wrap things up. This, ladies and gentlemen, has been the ultimate zombies ranking. The case closed. We have figured out and found a way to rank the greatest zombie maps of all time. I'm going to go. Have a wonderful day and bye. The data! It's the data!